Welcome to Lunchbox Sessions, bite-sized industrial training. Hello, this is Carl from lunchboxsessions.com, and in this video, we're going to have a look at the flow paths that may exist within a hydraulic system, or that may come to exist in a hydraulic system if there was a fault, and how reading the system pressure gauge and understanding the various expected pressure drops along various paths within the system can help you diagnose faults. And so two earlier videos that we produced, one by the title Pressure Drops in Series Circuits and another one by the title Pressure in Parallel Circuits may be very helpful videos to review before watching this one because in this video we're dealing with a hydraulic system that has both series and parallel circuits. And of course, once again, we've got our generic resistances called spring-loaded check valves. And our spring-loaded check valves have various different spring tensions listed by their equivalent PSI value. And we've got a couple of shutoff valves as well. In fact, just take a moment to analyze the system as you see it here and go ahead and predict yourself what you expect to see on the system pressure gauge once I turn on the pump. Let me just add a qualifier here that all of these dark blue hydraulic lines, anywhere where you see them other than inside the check valves themselves, any of the main blue hydraulic lines out in the open here, all of these are sized large enough to take the entire flow from our pump on any one particular line, meaning that the hoses or lines pose no resistance in this ideal model. The only resistances that we have are the spring-loaded check valves themselves. Go ahead and predict what you expect to see on the system pressure gauge once I turn on the pump. Are you ready? Let's see what happens. Aha! We've got 200 PSI system pressure reading. Did you guess correctly that the flow path would be through this 100 PSI spring-loaded check valve at the top? Of course, it had to be. That is a mandatory flow path, given how the circuit is laid out. But then, given the qualifier I gave you about the line sizes, did you guess correctly that all flow would pass next through this lower branch? And so, as you know from earlier videos, that the system pressure reflects the easiest path that the pump's flow could take. We've got 100 PSI on the first spring-loaded check valve and another 100 PSI spring-loaded check valve downstream. So those two loads add together to give us our system pressure. I'm going to turn the pump off. And now I'm going to close this shutoff valve to make it a path of very, very high resistance. So take a moment to have a look at this circuit. Where do we expect our next flow path to be? And go ahead and estimate what you believe the system pressure will be when I turn the pump back on. Here we go. Aha, 500 PSI. Congratulations to you if you got that right. Our new path of least resistance, given the closed shutoff valve, is through the 100 PSI check valve, then this 300, then this 100. We add those three resistances together to find out that our system pressure is expected at 500 PSI. All right, you're getting the hang of it. Let's turn the pump off one more time and let's close this shutoff valve over here on the far right. And of course, we've only got one main flow path available to us now. We don't have any parallel branches available. So hopefully everyone gets this right. And here we go. We have a 600 PSI system pressure. So in your hydraulic system, if you were expecting 200 PSI when you turned the system on, and yet you got 600 PSI system resistance, that would be a pretty easy way to understand that flow is not occurring in this branch. If you were expecting it to occur in this branch, then you've got some information that you can use. Something is now indicating that there must be blockage or very high resistance to flow in this particular parallel branch. And if you knew what all of the rest of your expected pressure drops add up to, you would know that since you're receiving a 600 PSI system pressure value on the system gauge, that 
the only branch where flow is occurring at this moment must be along this top branch here. And of course, you can't see inside hydraulic systems as you can on these animated models. So gathering up information about normal expected pressures for your hydraulic system really helps you when it comes time to troubleshoot. I'm going to remove a branch. And let's say we're working with a slightly simpler hydraulic system for a moment, where we've really only got two parallel branches that could open up. And if we knew in advance that this first load is a 100 PSI pressure load on the system, a resistance of 100 PSI, it could be a full flow filter, let's say, in front of a servo valve, perhaps. And perhaps further on down the system, we've got a hydraulic motor that is turning a screw conveyor or some other type of rotary device like a winch. And so if we know that, that when that system is running, that hydraulic motor is running, that it is normally a 300 PSI pressure drop. And this perhaps could be our return line filter, 100 PSI on our way back to tank. So on a day when we don't get the 500 PSI system pressure that we're expecting, and instead we get the 600 that you see now, that might be an indication to us that flow is blocked passing through this last load on its way back to tank. Or that if it is a filter has become so plugged that it's much easier for fluid to pass through the 200 PSI check valve on this upper branch. So that's just one very simple way for us to understand how to use system pressure if we know what the normal expected loads are throughout the system and how they add up, they all add up to give us our system pressure. We know that we should have been seeing 500 PSI on this gauge and that when we don't see it, something's not normal. Okay, that's it for this go around. That's a simple tutorial. I hope that's been helpful. Thanks for watching. We have hundreds of interactive resources like this live schematic, so you can try out your wild ideas without blowing anything up. Get started at lunchboxsessions.com.